Two people walk into my clinic. Both were told they have skin cancer. One has a pearly bump on the forehead that hasn't changed in months. The other has a mole that's grown just a few millimeters and looks strange. Both are anxious. But here's the thing. Though they both heard the same diagnosis, skin cancer, they may be facing a very different journey because not all skin cancers are the same. Skin cancer is a topic that comes up almost daily and often many times a day in my practice, and understanding it can make all the difference. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Marie Azizian, a board-certified general surgeon and an IFM-certified functional medicine physician. On this channel, I share health tips on skin health, food and supplements, functional medicine, surgery, and the latest medical research to help you feel your best. And if that sounds good, please like, share with your friends and family, and subscribe. So, skin cancer is a common term, but actually it implies two very different diseases. It's sort of an umbrella term, and under this umbrella, there are two major groups, non-melanoma skin cancers, which include basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas, and melanoma, a far less common but unfortunately much more aggressive form that accounts for most of skin cancer-related deaths. So melanoma makes up only about 1-4% to of all skin cancer cases, while non-melanoma skin cancers account for the remaining 96-99%. to So bows begin in the skin. Bows are linked to sun exposure. But that's where the similarities end. So let's start with non-melanoma cancers. These are the ones that I see most often. And the first type is a basal cell carcinoma, which is the most common skin cancer in the United States and many other countries. So it arises from the basal cells deep in the epidermis, which is a skin layer. And it's usually the result of years of sun exposure. And it may show up as a shiny bump or a sore that won't heal, or a patch of skin that looks slightly scarred. The good news, basal cell rarely spreads, but that doesn't mean that it's harmless or innocent. Left untreated, it can grow deeper and deeper, destroying tissue and even bone. And I actually have seen patients who lost parts of their nose and eyelid because they waited so long. Next one is squamous cell carcinoma. This one comes from keratinocytes, which are cells that make up most of our skin, and it's a little more aggressive than the basal cell and more likely to spread, especially if it's located on a high-risk area such as lips, ears, or scalp. And it may look like a rough patch or a horde like bump or a crusted sore. Sometimes it begins as an actinic keratosis, which is a precancerous lesion caused by, you guessed it, sun damage. And I actually have full videos about all of these diseases, and I'll link at least one of them above. So both of these non-melanoma cancers are very treatable, and most often with surgical removal. And of course, just like any cancer, they need to be caught early. They need to be completely treated. So, but now let's talk about melanoma. Unlike basal or squamous cell carcinoma, melanoma arises from melanocytes, which are pigment-producing cells in our skin. And melanoma can be actually very deceptive because sometimes it starts as a mole that's been there for years, for decades even, and then it starts to grow or change. Other times, it shows up as a brand new lesion, dark, irregular, or even pink and flesh-colored, making it harder to notice. And you may be familiar with ABCD rule to guide evaluation. Yet, what I've noticed over the years is that most patients don't really understand it well, and they need more thorough explanation. And I actually agree with them. It's not that straightforward. So let's break down A, B, C, D, E step by step. So starting with A for asymmetry. This means that one half of the mole or lesion doesn't match the other half in shape, color, or thickness. And that's different from benign, non-cancerous moles where both halves typically look the same. But in melanoma, the lesion is often irregular and asymmetrical, and imagine drawing a line through the middle and seeing two very different halves. So what is the clinical insight behind this? 
Asymmetry suggests uncontrolled and uneven growth, which is a hallmark of malignancy. It's one of the earliest visual cues that a lesion may be suspicious and should be biopsied. It's not definitely a cancer, but should be biopsied. Next, we have B for border irregularity. This refers to the edges of the mole or lesion. In a normal, benign mole, the borders should be smooth, even, and well-defined. But in melanoma, the border is often irregular, notched, blurred, or scalloped, kind of somewhat wavy. The clinical insight here is that irregular borders indicate that the melanocytes, which again, the pigment cells in our skin, may be growing in a disorganized or invasive pattern, which is, again, characteristics of malignant behavior. If the edge of a mold looks uneven or fades into surrounding skin, it is somewhat of a red flag that warrants closer examination, monitoring, or biopsy. Then, next one, we have C for color variation. This means that the mole or lesion contains multiple colors or uneven pigmentation. A benign mole, non-cancerous mole, it usually has one uniform color, typically light to dark brown. But a suspicious lesion, especially melanoma, may show different shades of brown or black, or areas of red, white, pink, gray, even blue, or just uneven distribution of color across the whole mold. The clinical interpretation here is this. Color variation suggests that the melanocytes are behaving abnormally and producing pigment in an uncontrolled and chaotic way. And this heterogeneity is a common sign of a malignant transformation. And especially when color appear in patches or swirls, um, those are irregular swirls within the same lesion. And we can see it well under the dermoscope, which is a little device that we use for mole checks. Then we have D that stands for diameter, larger than six millimeter. This refers to the size of the mole or a lesion. While benign moles are usually small, a warning sign for melanoma is a diameter larger than six millimeters, about the size of a pencil eraser. But here's something important. Melanomas can be smaller than 6 mm, especially in early stages. In fact, the smallest melanoma that I diagnosed at my clinic was 1 mm, which was literally a dot. So size alone isn't diagnostic, but when combined with asymmetry, irregularity, borders, or color variation, a larger diameter raises concern. The clinical insight here is straightforward, of course. Larger lesions are more likely to have undergone genetic changes that drive, again, uncontrolled growth. Measuring diameter is a simple screening tool and could be incredibly helpful in monitoring moles. Finally, we have E for evolution, meaning any change, and I repeat, any change over time. This includes changes in an existing mole, whether it's in size, shape, color, elevation, how raised the mole is, or the development of symptoms like itching, bleeding, or crusting. Even if a mole looks mostly normal, any noticeable change is a warning sign. Also, evolution implies occurrence of a new mole. So in general, a new mole in an adult is a red flag, and I'm talking about a mole, not a cosmetic brown spots or some cosmetic lesions like skin tags or seborrheic keratosis, it's, it's hard, of course, for the patient to discern what is what on their own. So I understand the concern and often confusion. Often patients come to me with something like this, a raised, unsightly, seborrheic keratosis. Well, I focus on something that I see nearby, a flat, atypical mole that may have turned into melanoma. So the clinical insight behind e-evolution is this. Melanoma is a dynamic process and one of the most telling clues that something is not right, that something is wrong, is when a mole starts to change. So evolution reflects ongoing genetic instability in the cells, which is often the earliest signal of malignant transformation, so change into a cancerous cell. But I'll be honest, not all melanomas follow these rules. Some melanomas could be amelanocytic, so, or amelanotic, as we say. That means that these melanomas have no pigment. They have no color at all. 
and that makes them even harder to detect for both the patient, of course, and often for the provider. All of this means that we need to diagnose melanomas early. Why is early detection of melanoma so important? Well, what makes melanoma dangerous is its ability to spread early and silently. It can travel through the lymphatic system or bloodstream, reaching organs like the lungs, liver, or brain. So early detection may mean life and death difference. So we can't underestimate that. At the time of diagnosis, the most critical factor in determining melanoma prognosis is the breast slow depth, which is a measure of how thick the melanoma is or how deeply the tumor has penetrated the skin. In general, the thicker the melanoma, the higher the risk of metastases and mortality. Early detection means catching melanoma before it got deeper, before it grew deeper. So now let's come back to our two types of non-melanoma and melanoma skin cancer. In general, non-melanoma skin cancers are common, they're often slow-growing, and they're typically cured with surgical procedures. And I have to say that there is an exception, again, as I quickly alluded to, to some high-grade squamous cell carcinomas, but in reality, most Basal and squamous cell carcinomas do not spread, and they're pretty easy to manage, or relatively easy to manage. Back to melanoma. Melanoma causes the vast majority of skin cancer-related death. In terms of the treatment, melanoma requires wider surgical margins, big scars, and it's deep enough. If it is deep enough, actually, it may require surgical evaluation of lymph nodes in the operating room, and if it spreads to other organs, then additional modalities such as immunotherapy or targeted treatments are used. Yet, I would like to emphasize that caught early, melanoma has a survival rate above 90%. We have many patients with melanoma in our clinic, and once they're done with initial surgery, their lives get back to normal. They come for routine skin checks, and honestly, melanoma is just a history. It's their history, and they're enjoying their lives. And that can only happen if melanoma is caught early before it gets deeper or spreads to other organs. In summary, so here's what I hope that you take away from this. If you've been told you have skin cancer, don't panic. But don't assume that it's all the same. Some skin cancers are slow and local. Others, like melanoma, can be fast and fatal. And the only way to know the difference is to have it properly evaluated. And if you have noticed a mole changing um, or a new spot or something that just doesn't look right, just get it checked. Your skin is actually the only organ that you can examine with your eyes. So let's use that to our advantage. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. And if you like skin topics, check out my book, The Clear Skin Diet, Unlocking the Secret Link between food sensitivities and skin health. It is about how various foods can affect your skin and cause a variety of skin conditions by changing your gut microbiome, immune system, and hormones. It is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.